things are moving. We're being recorded and we're live, Keith. Welcome to Keith and the Girl. I'm Keith Malley. I'm Chemda. Two great guests today. First of all, Kevin Allison. Hello, Kevin. Hello. Kevin, of <laughs> course, the Risk podcast we have. Um, the state is uh, having more dates where you can see the reunion. Uh, this is in April. Very, very exciting stuff. Good to see you. How are you? I'm good. I'm good. I was just in a movie. Explain. I just acted in front of cameras for the first time in the longest time. Uh, Mike Jan, who is a member of the state, invited me in January to be a part of this horror movie he's making. And I had a significant role and I was very nervous because, you know, I haven't done it in a while. And all these Hollywood, you know, people on this set were like, you're amazing. Why aren't you doing this more regularly? So I'm Can't really excited that. about it. Yeah. Well, you say it's been a while. You were in the Emmy nominated Karate Kid TV show. Oh, yeah, yeah. OK, there's little cameos <laughs> here and there. <laughs> uh, also joining us, the great Calvin Cato. Hello, Calvin. Hello. I wish I was in a movie. That would be nice. <laughs> I just got to ask. First of all, you have to go back a couple decades being a hit TV series with improv masters. And then, you know, I just want to say the, these two people are one of the hand or two handfuls of people that I was like, please be on mic with me before I go. You guys are rock stars. I feel like a rock star when I'm on mic with you. I feel everyone should follow you around, like not just on social media in real life. So I am super excited to be here with you both. And if you're not, if you're listening and you're not following these people one way or another, get stalking. Excited. Uh, exactly. Um, if you go to keithandthegirl.com slash and you type in a guest name, you can hear all the other times they were on before, for example, slash Kevin Allison or slash Calvin Cato. Anybody, Mark Marin, Jim Norton, the late Gilbert Gottfried, Bowen Yang, SNL was just last night. Uh, just type in slash and the, the guest section is uh, is pretty cool. I, just... I like that SNL was on for Keith last night. That's the world we live in. You get to say yeah. that because that's what it was on for Keith. Right, that's right. <laughs> Sunday Night Live. Whatever, folks. It's it true be... if it's true. It might be on for you guys tomorrow, but I don't know. Time, time is a construct. Let's mm -hmm. construct. I just did uh, my friend Josh Ricardo's podcast. That'll be out on Wednesday. It's called Working Class Holes. And they talk about the old shitty jobs that you had. And I wouldn't say it was a shitty job when I talk about kid parties. It is it when is you the get with, there. <laughs> it's the one with the most stories. Well, it is for the parents when I say uh, uh, they go, can you face paint my kid a superhero? And I literally paint the face all green and make him the Hulk. And then I say, hey, what if all your friends were Hulks and you're all team Hulk? And so they're all green. They're happy. The parents don't know what to do. Uh, so that was fun to talk about. Whenever Keith showed up to your kid's party, bath time was a nightmare that night. He's just right. like, do you want green on your arms? Hulk is green on his arms. And then, uh, of course, and we're, we're not exaggerating. We're not exaggerating. I know that Keith has painted somebody's arms like, fuck it. We'll just make the whole thing like you're extra. Oh, I, I, I take I take the black paint. And I just write the word Batman on the side of their face. I'm like, you're Batman. <laughs> I put two triangles above their eyes and I write Batman on the cheek. Go there you go. <laughs> and they're like, Do you remember your last day there? What's that? Sorry. Do you remember your last day there? Uh, mm. I not necessarily. It wasn't anything, anything monumental. I remember me and Hemda had to quit that to start Keith and the girl and really make it work. But uh, nothing bad necessarily happened. Whereas other jobs. Yes. The last day was always something. <laughs> There's always something. This, One restaurant you know job was I took everybody's order for lunch and then walked out. Yeah. Um, yeah. It's But no, the clown thing, it ended up it ended on the up and up. See, here's the thing. Like when you work in a restaurant, you have to go in the next day and see the same people, new customers, but mm -hmm. same people. So you can't just throw a dish at a customer that you're not going to see the next day because you're going to see the busboy next day. Right. right but in there. clown stuff and in kids parties, we would show up to your house, to your event, to wherever. So we can paint what we want and then leave the rest. <laughs> yeah, so yeah, it yeah. was so his his every day at clowning was a uh, clownful and his his last day at waiter job was the big here's who I really am. It's right. it's amazing. <laughs> well, it was hard to pick what job I was going to talk about because so on Amazon right now you can get the daddy mails book that I'll get into for a second in a minute. 
And uh, the Great American Novel, the first book I wrote and the Great American Novel has so many shit jobs that I had to choose from. Mm. One day I worked for Feminists Against Pornography. I realized oh, really, it, yeah. wow, well, this that's... lady, it was it was a, it was well, it was a corporation of one. But thank Whoa. you. It is impressive <laughs> Two, when I showed up and you would go on the streets and yell at people <laughs> to give money to this cause. That's obviously bullshit. And when they say, oh, no, but I'll I'll find more information if you have a website or a mailing list. And she said, oh, are you going to email when your daughter gets raped? And I'm like, oh, um, my God. OK, um, you know, oh, hopefully you'll have a quarter for a pay phone when she's getting sucked off. Oh, OK. Uh, and then sometimes I was by myself and people would come over to our table and be like, you kind of would do better. You do better without her. I'm like, yeah, I know, but 20 bucks an hour is pretty good. You know? <laughs> but yeah, I, I only had one day of balls for that one. But I you was trying to make a difference. I forgot how many jobs you've had. You oh, also, too many. It's a in book. your last book, I remember. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I remember you decided to decided. None of these were decisions. <laughs> right. Um, <laughs> you landed on. Uh, right. My selling... landlords decided. You know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the IRS decided someone yeah. decided right. um, and, and you went to sell fake perfume. Oh, yes. Yeah. And you didn't have enough money on your way back. So like you tried to it sell was in Long watch Island. or something. It was, it was in Long Island. <laughs> I didn't have enough money to get back on the train. They promised I would if I followed their sales techniques, but it did not work. Yeah. And, so, and I happen to have. I think I had a watch and a scientific calculator for what it, on me for whatever oh, no. reason. And I'm trying to sell them, but everybody just thinks, you know, they're stolen, obviously. And I'm like, I just need a fucking train ticket. Oh, now I'm older God. and wiser. I'd hide in the bathroom, you know, but of the train. But yeah, it was uh, <laughs> I don't even know, you know how I got home. Wow. Oh, my God. Yeah, me too. I have such a list. Door to door dictionary salesman. Oh. Um, the cater cater waitering had the most. I mean, I, I was in so many insane and because I worked for Glorious Foods. So it was, you know, your clients were Trump or right. Martha Stewart or whatever. And just the shit I saw was just I, just crazy name and, one and name I, one what'd you see what'd you see come well, on why should we I, vote for trump tell us how he eats it's probably disgusting i ran into a fella just the other day in bed sty and he was like do you remember me we used to work together i was like oh my god i do i was like do you remember me rimming you in the bushes oh at oh. ralph lauren's house <laughs> I would always just get loud on whatever that, you know, we were serving like all this Dom Perignon. It was it was Ralph Lauren's wife's 50th birthday and she rode in on a white horse. For and, real? Yeah. Mm -hmm. OK. And the, I just like, was drinking Dom Perignon all day until finally I was rimming a co-worker in the bushes. And fortunately, I had a uh, a captain who thought I was a nice guy and everything. So he uh, got a few other cater waiters to carry me stealthily to the back of a car. Oh, Captain, my <laughs> captain. <we> transported <laughs> oh, my God. And I managed to throw up out the window <gasps> onto the cater waiters in the back of the car. <gasps> it was a whole thing. This um, is so funny because people are like, Oh my God, weed is getting le legal. What about the children? You were drinking Ta Don Perignon. Okay? <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Oh my All right. God. Classy shit, folks. Classy Ooh. shit. Then he manages to throw up out of the window into the next window behind him. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> and what's so wow. funny is when Keith was like, I don't know how I made it home. I'm like, did you rim someone? And there you are <laughs> showing us how to do See? it. So <laughs> that's how you get it done. How do you may I? I don't know if I should folks listening. How do you rim someone in bushes? Because I think it's difficult <laughs> to have sex. Well, I mean, I mean, you know? I mean, like behind like the bushes, how? you know, like there was, the, you know, they had like a maze, like, you know, uh, in The Shining or whatever. So, yeah, <laughs> we were we were you would have I to see. stumble back there to find us. Yeah. I see. Okay, okay, folks. We I understand what things. you're saying. I get it. <laughs> you thought you weird shit was going on in the bushes in the and... topiary. Yeah, you, th you thought Saltburn was weird. Holy shit. <laughs> yeah, the the restaurant 
the restaurant. I have a whole chapter in this book, the great American novel on the restaurant business called rules for living. So, yeah, there's a lot of don't sit at a dirty table and then wonder why your table is dirty. <laughs> Use the name on my name tag to get my attention, but don't throw it in when I'm already at your table like we're buddies. It's unnerving right. and we're not buddies. Right. Yeah. Don't tell jokes. Just order your food. Howdy doody. <laughs> oh my God. When I'm asking whose dish is whose, don't just stare at me like an idiot. Did you order the flounder? Then when I ask who ordered the flounder, you say I did. If I say flounder, I'm naming the dish. I'm not just saying the word flounder. There's a, there's a lot of life lessons in here so that you don't get spit in your food or worse. Uh, and then there's important. the worst part. That's a chapter. That, that's, a, that's a chapter two. Let's not get into that right now. Meanwhile, meanwhile, Calvin's sitting there going like, I was going to be a doctor. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I've had some shitty. I used to work at this is. So how old I am. I used to work at the Tower Records that was on West 4th Street. Oh, it was like yeah. a huge Tower Records. You're and I worked cool. in the I mean, I will say this. It was an interesting job because I was in the That's movie section of Tower Records. And my job was to take care of the foreign and porn sections. Oh. And it was a very weird cross section of folks. Uh, the Culkins came in once. I probably well, whatever, it's too late. It's gone. <laughs> the Culkins did come in. They were nice. Um <laughs> they, they like one their time. foreign porn. <laughs> you go they go in as a family <laughs> that's a little strange of course you're not gonna end up normal that's stranger than being a kid actor <laughs> well they hey, were trying to leave them behind this time but it didn't work yeah. <laughs> this one's more for there was you no, like ordering homo alone or anything like that right. they like right. that hard and, films. right but there was one time i remember this lady was trying to get this movie and she kept calling it Mr. Right Now, which is like a porn video. And I had to explain to her, like, I think you mean Mr. Right. And she goes, no, no, it's called Mr. Right Now. It's for my six-year-old. And oh like, you weren't God. allowed to say, you couldn't say this is a pornography. Like you had to be discreet about it. So I was trying to be like, no, this is really isn't it for your son, but you should try Mr. Right, which is what you mean. And then this guy behind her just starts yelling, it's a porno, it's a porno, like <laughs> over and over until she ran out of the store. That was horrific. I guess that's why you're not supposed to yell. It's a porno. Oh, yeah. my God. I but... stole 45 CDs from that Tower record. <laughs> I like kept I, I was like, so, I was so excited. I was like, I'm just going to keep stealing from. And I got bolder and bolder. I eventually was like, I wonder if I could steal like entire like Wagner operas. You know, <laughs> like, if I, like, it's a big box. Was it man. always winter or did you have to like put it in your butt or something? Like, how do you do question. that? Thank I think you. it was usually winter when I was doing it so I could have like a trench coat or whatnot. But I, I, I said, I'm going to do it until they catch me. And sure enough, one day I saw them putting cameras in the ceiling. <laughs> and I was like, well, if I'm going to get caught any day, it'll be today. And that was the day. <gasps> oh, yeah. Did they I, catch you? I was stealing uh, MC Hammer. Of all things. Oh, worth it. <laughs> Please, Hammer, don't hurt him. <laughs> okay. I mean, it's no vanilla ice, but okay. <laughs> Let me tell you something. Um, <laughs> you guys are on this podcast because Calvin wanted to tell you he saw you the whole time. Oh, yeah. yeah. Here's <laughs> the thing. The security was so bad there. I... I would, would actively catch people stealing and I would talk to the security guard and they were like, just don't approach them. And I was like, but they're stealing. Like I got in trouble one time when a guy flat out stole money from the till. And I wow. was like, um, this guy just took this money and I started pointing at him and the security guard was like, actually, you can't point at people. That's rude. And I'm like, he's rude. He's stealing. This is my life. And they were Dude, like, Kevin knew this. So I, took, I had to go to the back of the store and then get talked to because they were like, that's just not the policy. You can't call people out in case you don't know that they're stealing. And I'm like, but I saw them steal. And then they just took me off the registers for two days. <gasps> wow. Guess what, you guys? Guess what? This was like a three floor giant building. It was a staple in New York City. Guess where it is now? Stolen. Bye. <laughs> That's <Get> security. <laughs> yeah. Oh, my gosh. So wow. when they when so they they do catch you with the with hammer don't hurt them and are yeah, they, they, they embarrassed did take, for you they took they took it <laughs> they're like they dude just take it take three copies Get it they the were like uh-oh 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 
<laughs> you dance out the door. They're like, where's he going? We got a, we got a dancer. <laughs> oh, God. and then there's museum guard. The way that they would punish you at the Museum of Modern Art, if there was any reason to punish you, would be to make you stand in the Dada gallery for <laughs> like two weeks straight. What? Which would start to make you feel like you were losing your mind. What is that? They can't do uh, that. Da Dada is total <laughs> nonsense. Total, you know, uh, those were the, uh, the before the surrealists even is the Dada, okay. which is art that deliberately makes no sense. Um, but no, I would go in stoned. I once, I would once was looking in a window at this uh, Matisse sculpture made out of wax. And I was so stoned. The, the gallery was filled with people. I was like, I wanted to get a closer look. What is that detail there? Slammed my face into the <gasps> glass. That was, I forgot, forgot it was behind glass. Slammed my face into the glass. Everyone in the gallery was like, oh, the guard just slammed his face. <laughs> oh my God. Into that glass window over there. What, and are you then bleeding? there was no, 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 no. I was fine. It was just a big bang and like, oh, hell oh, yes. That Did you go works. like, long live Dadaism. <laughs> right. This is art. Art is life. Right. And just turn don't it into avant-garde. That was Dada. You're so dumb. You don't even get it. You think I'm just stoned, idiots. <laughs> and I... then there was one time I was in a gallery with a big Lembrook sculpture called Standing Youth. Uh, and that standing youth was unclothed and no one, it was like a Tuesday at, you know, like noon or something like that. And just no one was there. And I'm looking at him across the gallery and I'm like, I don't know. I, I wonder what it would be like to like feel his balls. So I go <gasps> over and I'm like, I'm kind of fondling his balls and a family of four walks in, you know, mom, dad, two oh, little I'm girls. Dusting. I pretended I was dusting. What's funny is he didn't he didn't just touch it. You just used the word fondled. Okay. <laughs> I was uh when I did uh, Josh's podcast, he he brought up a time that he thought I said um that I got fired for drinking on the job, but it wasn't until after that I remembered the story. It was that a manager sat me down at the end of a shift. I can't even see straight. It's so egregious how much I was drinking. And and he goes, Keith, are you are you drunk? And I go, no. And then he goes, Keith. And I go, well, with that <laughs> attitude, then yes. And I go, but I, I'm only I'm not making money with here. I made thirty five dollars all day. So I I was I took some drinks and he goes, well, how much I'm the manager? How much money do you think I make? And I go, oh, you want a drink? He's like, yeah, well, don't do it again. Come back tomorrow. Because who else is going to work there? It's $35. <laughs> oh, um, God. God. So anyway, um, <laughs> this book, The Dad Emails. I'm very excited about it. And Calvin Cato's in it. Oh, yeah. in fact, yes. How did that happen? Well, he uh, during uh, we took uh, the sections of me catfishing my dad for a year. He thought he was talking to my ex-wife and hitting on her. And uh, we talked about as the emails came in, whatever guest happened to be on that day. And the great Calvin Cato was on for one of these days. And uh, and he's in there. He's under uh, episode 12. That's my name of chapters. I truly wish you and her and the children the very best. He said, as you know, he's uh, he's hitting on what he thinks is my ex. And uh... <laughs> while you're looking for it yeah. also, when we were um, even before we published the book, we had a reading and Calvin was a part yes. of that. And you were like VIP of this. You had costume changes, character analysis. I had I mean, wig did, changes. It was a lot. You did wow. your research. You were like, camera. how does my character feel when they say this? It was so professional and out of control funny. Keith, I hope you release that video. to. I know we did it for the yes. special Kickstarter people. I hope you release that to the public at some point. It was mwah. it's very fun. Mm -hmm. uh, so I'm singing this chapter. It's where my dad says uh, about his wife and he says, I have a fine wife. You, however, Catherine, are a desirous, vibrant woman. I have, and Calvin says, instead of fine wife, why can't he say I have a beautiful wife, like very caring and 
He was able to do it for your ex, but for your mom, she's a printer. She works well enough. <laughs> oh my God. Uh, Sherry writes five stars. I bought the book yesterday and I'm already 75% done. If you think your dad sucks, read the book and feel slightly better, hopefully not worse, about your own family's dynamics. Seriously, though, great book with jaw drops and literal LOLs. Wow. And this, of course, at keithandthegirl.com slash dad. And I know that you keep um, holding up the physical book and it is gorgeous, but I feel people need to know that this is available on the Kindle and it's just as beautiful. Uh, five stars says a blue canary, if I may brag, the story of a deranged man in the extreme lengths his son, his son went through to screw with him. I wouldn't <laughs> believe half the book was true if I wasn't listening to the Keith and the Girl podcast when everything went down. I'm bad at reviews. So something, something, something by this book. It's a great read. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, that's perfect. Honestly, awesome. that's most reviews. Let's be honest. <laughs> right. mm -hmm. Uh mm -hmm. Sarah says, Hot fire. <laughs> I got this book especially to see Father Malley's reply, and much like his life, it was underwhelming. This book, <laughs> though, is not underwhelming. It is great. Okay. Yeah, I did <laughs> I sent him a PDF of the book before it was done and said, Whatever you write at the end, I will add it. And he wrote. <laughs> I love all my children. Some I respect a whole lot more than others. Keith's father. Like, all right, well, <laughs> you're in the book too then. Uh, and a final one, Joseph says five stars. Wow, just wow. This book has so many highs and lows. Funny all the way through. Even if you know the story, it still shocks you every time. That's true. That's true. Uh, also available, my new uh, special is out. It's called Nice Try Tricksters. Perfect name. Ryan says A plus, a fantastic special. Uh, Chris says very funny album. I was laughing hard in the first minute. This album hits on topical subjects in a fresh and hilarious way. And you'll be shocked at how Keith turns trauma and loss into revelations and laughs. Get the album. So nice try, Trickster. So thank it's you guys. So good for all your support. All right. And Calvin, you, you thanks for being part of this. Did I not send you a book, Calvin? I got it. Oh, OK. Oh, OK. okay. And I'm very excited. Shocked. I don't know why I said it. So like, I got it. Like, as Lisa Good. Kudrow. I got <laughs> it. <laughs> I did get it. Though. <laughs> right. Oh, it's very exciting. Very exciting stuff. No, uh, people are asking, did my dad uh, write back to me? He's he's not going to write back. He's not going to. When shocked. you hold a phys when you I sent him this book, Kevin, and made him sign for it. So I know he has it. Wow. Um, yeah. And it says uh, it says something like uh, book number one. And then it said, look, Dad, we finally worked together. Keith. <laughs> wow. And so the, yeah, there's a, we're like, I think he knows like anything he writes could be another book now. So I think he knows this is the end of our relationship. Holy I don't know. Lord. I'm waiting for your birthday, April 15th. If he could remember that that's one of his kids birthdays, I think he'll like bubble up again. He does not know how to quit. I, I'm I'm never going to be on the side that that's all we're hearing from him hear unless you. he's dead. Did anyone check on him? No. OK. No. You heard it here first. I called it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a priest now. <laughs> that's, right. that's how easy it is. Done. Uh, I brought some news stories. If you guys want to crack wise with us, I think it might be fun. I'm reading about Arisha Boykins, a 22 year old assistant coach, uh, coach, basketball coach in Virginia, and uh, one of her players, a teenage student athlete, was out of town. So the assistant coach acted like she was on the team and played against uh, against their rivals. Mm -hmm. So you have like 13 year olds on this team. The 22 year old assistant coach dominated. She's <laughs> she's doing blocks, layups. She's running and catching a ball from going into the stands. She's not shy about kicking ass. Her shirt number happened to be number one. <laughs> and of course, it's on video. And so she's she's making these all these baskets. But like as she makes them, she kicks her legs like in the air, all sloppy, like she's just a kid. <laughs> it's the funniest <laughs> fucking thing. Oh my god, that's great. Is she like way taller than them, or is she at least like kind of their height? Like is it I, I saw a video. Weak? She was kind of their height. But okay, I, could, I feel but I can't better. see her face enough. But I think you'd be able to tell 13 versus 22, I think. <laughs> oh, yeah, that is funny. She, she's she's leading the group. We did it. They're cheersing each other. <laughs> uh, the, the, the head coach was also fired, of course, because they were in on it also. Oh, my goodness. Wow. 
and it's the school's called Churchland, so I have Yay. to assume it's religious also. <laughs> Yay, that's perfect. That is how religion works, right? <laughs> right. Sounds like a nightmare, church. Yeah, land. it's it's right. it's an interpretation of the Bible, folks. It's not literal. In the it, interpretation, it says, "Do what you must to live your life," and there it is. <laughs> and that she's also showing off on the court, and I guarantee all the students keep passing her the the ball. <laughs> you know, you can't. You're a student. You can't. You can't hide anything. You know. I remember being a kid. I was in school. I think it was second grade, and uh, I had a the teacher left. I was just bored. I had a pencil on the edge of my desk and I just, you know, flicked it. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? It flies in there, gets caught in the blinds. The teacher comes back. Everybody in class just keeps looking at me and the pencil and in the blinds. <laughs> then me, pencil. Like, I can't hide <laughs> shit. <laughs> of course you're caught. Because, because at 13 years old, you have nothing to talk about. So it's just going to come out. When you go home right. and your parents ask you how your day was, how the fuck was your day? What did mm, you right. do? <laughs> What did you do? You're 13. A oh, pencil got stuck in the thing. You're going to talk about it. <laughs> What'd you do? You went on a great date. You, you had a blind date. Yeah. What? You, you, you got a new client. Nothing happened. I think I'm Johnny talked to you at the playground. Congrats. Let's talk about it. Uh, speaking of tricksters, Oprah Winfrey is leaving the board of Weight Watchers. They don't want her there anymore because she said, yeah, I use a Zempic sometimes. <laughs> so they kicked her out. Yeah, I, they're acting no. like it's mutual. But yeah, you, you can't be saying that you're using these these drugs and support Weight Watchers. Uh -huh. In no world, in no world do I believe that somebody said, you know what? No, thank you. Oprah. Why would she leave? Why leave then? Oh, Oprah I left on her own. Come yeah. on, it's Oprah. Yeah. Yeah. Why? Why? Well, she she probably she's just got busy. Tired of she doesn't calories. care about the pencil in the thing. Don't do nothing. Yeah. Just say it's it's almost like a band retiring. Like, we're not going to play anymore or an actor. I'm not going to be an actor. Like, just don't do it. And then when you do it, you do it. So why would she say I don't want the money Just say, yeah, Weight Watchers? Who gives a shit? Well, I didn't what? see you on commercials lately. OK, no problem. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Wow, did Oprah's she, not that did any of us know that Oprah was involved with Wade Watchers? I had no idea. I thought her <laughs> chef, personal trainer, and house person was her Weight Watchers. Correct. I cannot imagine Correct. that she can't just hire someone to smack it out of her hand or some shit. <laughs> like, that's not... <laughs> Oprah is what we yeah. feel like lotto money is. You know, when mm. we're like, if I won the lotto, uh -huh. if I won the lotto, maybe I wouldn't go to Weight Watchers. Right. You, yeah. What are you what are you what are you picturing? Oprah sitting in the weekly meeting like this is how much I weigh now. <laughs> yeah. Being Anyone like, else being like, oh, my God, this this carrot is a point. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> Do you guys uh, watch uh, Real Housewives? These this kind of thing on Bravo specifically? No, no, okay. no I got out. I the last reality show. <laughs> Well, that's not true. I watch Drag Race, but other than Drag Race, I still remember the last full reality show I ever saw was Flavor of Love. And I okay. quit because it was season two where one of the contestants, Flavor of Love is basically like The Bachelor, but Flavor of Flav is who you're vying for, quote unquote. Oh, yeah. And um, they give you clocks if to, if you get to stay on. Sure. And the second season, first episode, one of the bachelorettes shat on the floor and Flavor Flav caught her shitting on the floor mm -hmm. and then he kept her on an extra episode. And I said, you know what? Nope, this is not for me. I can't. I can't. Yeah, you're not taking it serious. Obviously, you would get rid of her. <laughs> you know what? I, I just you made me realize just now. I don't think I'm watching reality shows either because they drag it on too long. Like reality. Again, nothing happens. You're like a 13 year old hoping a pencil gets stuck somewhere. And you're just like, oh, my God, they're going food shopping like. Fuck it. I'm going food shopping. At least I'm going to do something. This is horrible. They just stretch it out. And what about this? And what about that? And I'm like, oh, I don't think I care about anybody on these mm -hmm. reality shows. Except recently, I clicked on the Long Guilin's medium. And I'm mm -hmm. like, I wonder if 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 watching this person, I'm, I'm fucking out of shows, but I'm not. You know, everyone's going to send me like a million shows. I have a list, blah, 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 whatever. Who cares? <laughs> I saw it. I clicked on it thinking like, 
what if I could see how she works? Because no matter what, she's really good at what she does. I, I don't believe that she can see anything or talk to anybody, but she's good at reading people. And I wanted to see if I would find it interesting how she came up with that or what she did. She basically goes, did somebody's kid die in here? And I'm like, did you just say that at a pizza place? <laughs> <laughs> and then they're like, no, no, somebody died. Does anybody experience a death here? And someone's like, well, my uncle's brother. And she's like, I felt it. And I'm like, all right, oh I felt it too. God. Goodbye. So, <laughs> but it didn't, I was like, all right, let me see the next scene. The next scene was her daughter wanting to, I want a car. Oh my God, you don't even have a license yet. What do you want a car? And I'm like, why am I watching this conversation with these digits? Get a car or don't. I don't care. And I turned it off. But now it's in my continue watching. And I'm like, stop insulting oh. me. I did not watch this to now continue watching. And now you're just, <laughs> if anyone's looking at my feed, I did not watch it. That is the extent of where I watched. And I want that nowhere in my timeline. I don't want it in my social media because like now it thinks I'm into like fucking mediums and shit and Long Island and all wow. this fucking shit. I don't want that. How do You're I into Long yeah. Island. <laughs> <laughs> all things I, Long Island. I really think that you should be able to be like, and I know they have little things like this on, on social media, like, hey, was this ad for you or not? And I don't even want to participate in that because I'm like, now I'm going to tell you how to play me. Fuck. <laughs> this sucks. How do I get out of this without interacting with you again? So anyway, <laughs> I just want to say to the mass, to the masses, I don't want to watch Long Island Medium. I got curious for a second. <laughs> you caught me and I, I repent. I feel bad. Thank you. We do you guys the ever algorithm hit... here is that yeah do you yeah. do you ever hit thumbs up or thumbs down when it says do you like this i i, I don't i do mm. because the because people because i know what it's like to need that that like and the reminder so if i'm on my bicycle no i won't stop and then hit the like button and i i assume my view is what you want and that's my currency for you today no no i mean like a tv show on netflix this kind of thing you know they don't bravo doesn't need your like do you do you press like so that you get more of the same thing? Not usually. No, not on Netflix. I, no. do, I'll, I'll I see like a horror movie up. and it, it'll suck, but I'll be like, I had fun, but I don't want more of this necessarily. Right. Exactly. What did you say? I thumbs Calvin? up certain things. Like if it's if it is really good or if it's something that I feel like, oh, this is important. And like or even if I'm like. So, for example, like my boyfriend and I watched this like movie that was like it was like a gay movie, but it was one of those like kind of crappy independent ones where you can tell they're like, oh, we made this on a budget and it's like a right. like, breaking glass productions kind of thing. But like the core of it, I was like, oh, this is interesting. So I thumbs up it to be like, I hope that you make more of this and hopefully right. you'll get better exactly. actors like, in the script. Right. But I'll never thumbs down things. I feel like that's too mean and like. <laughs> I agree. I agree with that. I will never thumbs down anything because one like. What, why? Just just keep moving. You know, I don't, mm -hmm. no one needs that shit in their life. And number two, it counts the same as a thumbs up. So if I don't like it, I'm still giving them the things that they want and need to continue and grow strong. So no, I'm not thumbs up. I only interact with things I like. Also, also, one time I showed my brother and my nephews this video. And then my brother's like, hey, can you send me that video that you were showing us? You cannot find it in some places unless you like it because it won't tell you about all the videos. It'll tell you about only your interactions with it. So now I'm like, well, what if I want to show this to my nephews? Like, <laughs> oh, right, right. Yeah, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I think the only reality shows I saw, like I saw Survivor when back in the day when they let ugly people on it. And then <laughs> oh uh, and I, I saw, you know what I'm talking about. And then I, I agree. Saw... I agree. I agree. Reality shows used to allow reality people to come in. Mm, and you, right. you can't That's be like true. too over the top unless you're the too over the top person, you know. Mm -hmm. But all of the reality shows were like, this is kind of a not, you know, Hollywood looking person, right. even if it's not like completely. I was working as a fact checker at Rolling Stone magazine when there was a reality television show that started shooting there called something like I was an intern at Rolling Stone. I think it lasted like one season. Okay. They they asked if if we would be okay with them filming and like everyone on staff was like no. 
So they just allocated hallways that people used the least as being, okay, that's where the show happens, right? And then outside, down on the street, the trailers said stuff like, uh, over-concerned conservative mom or oh. angry rebellious daughter. You know, that, that, like like it was clear that they were just casting people mm. as archetypes for this goddamn show. So right. yeah, I mean, they're they're just out of control with the extent to which they make it all up. You know, right? Were they were some people there for the wrong reasons? <laughs> <laughs> so just someone wander. I'm an, I'm an over concerned conservative mom. I saw what, a rock of love do, trailer. Sorry, I'm I'm gonna put out. Um, I'm gonna start a reality show, and and my Craigslist whatever or posting will be Craigslist. Like, <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> whatever you do, <laughs> I'm not in that version of production. But I'll be like, want to make friends. <laughs> right, right, right. Come here. We only want to make friends. <laughs> the only dating one I saw was Rock of Love because I I love the band Poison. Uh, Brett Michaels, of course, his dating show. And I remember, and I don't think someone there for, for the right reasons because they're saying how much they love Brett Michaels. And then one of the first challenges was to take magnet words. And rearrange the words so that the, it was the chorus of every rose has its thorn. And out of a dozen <laughs> girls, none can do it. Ah, wow. like, why would you hear that? Weren't they too young? It's like, this is not what they're listening to right now or ever. Right. They right. Should have at, you should have at least for your audition for that, sing a little bit of it or or write a little bit of it just so you, you save face. But I'm sure they love that part. Also, you like reality shows about rehab, Keith. Uh, rehab's good yeah yeah rehab's good well that's the thing because those those seem i mean you're exploiting them you're not going to get help with uh you know getting help is about losing your ego and when you put cameras on people's faces uh you're you're not really uh taking them down a notch um so yeah those i'll watch this is why i bring up a bravo there's a lawsuit against bravo and uh the main guy andy cohen who's in charge of real housewives and all these things saying that uh they do surprise, surprise, plow these women with alcohol and drugs and knowing that they're in rehab or, or trying to get help through AA every so often, deliberately fuck up their schedules so they can't go to AA. Uh, this kind really? of really. Yeah. No, wait, 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 wait. Are you uh, talking about this for their sus. rehab show? No, 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 no. Or for regular for housewives, housewives of dumb of fucks. Yeah. 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 Uh huh. Uh huh. Uh-huh. Uh huh. New so- uh-huh. lawsuit. I mean, that's not surprising. Yeah, I don't. But I don't understand some of these accusations. Allow them with alcohol is not terminology that I understand. <laughs> so I don't know what a judge is going to say about how you plowed me with alcohol. I not certain about that. And then changing your schedule so you, quote, can't go to your AA meeting. I don't know that that's I don't know their AA meetings. Usually in New York, at least I know it's a big city, but. There's like one every hour. Now there's some on Zoom, whatever. But you do have a home group that you like to specifically go to with the same people. And you have like people expecting you there. But I don't these these terms are weird. I think new- someone was plowed and alcohol happened to be there, you know, plowed <laughs> with alcohol. I see. So they want you to be the judge, right? <laughs> with your interpretation. It's like the Bible. Let's just interpret it. A new lawsuit paints a damning picture of the behind the scenes culture at Bravo. uh, Saying it's a dysfunctional club that thrives off of thrives off of hard drugs, encourages alcohol abuse and turns a blind eye to sexually predatory behavior. I mean, I thought that's what those real housewives were selling about themselves. They're accusing uh, Andy Cohen of a predatory part. Not the predatory part. I would say the predatory part is, yeah. Uh, Andy Cohen uh, snorts cocaine with uh, the Real Housewives. This is saying, and if you don't do cocaine with him, he won't make you look good in the show. He'll edit you like an asshole. The papers claim that the network is aware that a different senior producer uh, routinely sends unsolicited pictures of their genitalia to lower level production employees. Higher ups know about it and don't stop it. 
Okay, um, that I understand. Yeah, that terminology is very clear. Thank I, you. <laughs> <laughs> We've all experienced that. So, uh... <laughs> Leah McSweeney, 41, claims that the network preyed on her alcohol problem either by intentionally exas uh, exacerbating it or by preventing her from seeking help with it in a cynical attempt to turn her suffering into ratings. I, I, I see I'd that. I mean, hear more you're, about you're, that. you're really fucking with people. It, it is an evil thing, I think. You, you you know that you you're deliberately having damaged people on. Yeah, it's, it's fun to watch them fucked up. And I don't feel guilty if I do it. But as a producer, it's it's not good. Yeah, I don't yeah. I don't know that they're usually in their ads seeking well-rounded wellness uh, enthusiasts, mindful meditators to be on a reality show. I don't know that that's your casting call. You are bigger than life. That's what you think you are. That's why you are coming into the space. Except I don't want to keep going on this speech because I understand that like there's predatory behavior there. Like it there, there is no there's no network that could be like, no, we were looking for the most respectful aspects of these people's lives to encourage them to live their best, most real. No, that's we know that that's not. What like people who go on um what is it Jerry Jer Jerry Springer? That's, that's I get to oh yeah, right. yeah. <laughs> Brandy. Wait, what's the chat Jerry? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah Jerry. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. It's not. It's not Bob. It's not Bob. It's not Kevin. Okay, got it. <laughs> but Jerry Springer. If I was married and my husband said, um, you know, uh, Jerry Springer is gonna fly us out, and blah, I'm like, oh yeah, we're gonna get divorced. Fuck it. Let's yeah. let's save our time. Oh, you know what? Let's go to this thing, and then not go on the TV show because you know you're just going to throw a chair at me. Throw a chair at the wall and get the fuck out. Do not invite me on Jerry Springer and expect us to keep being married. Bye. <laughs> McSweeney's lawyers claim to the court papers that knowing she was battling alcohol addiction when she joined the show and that she had a history of serious mental health problems and took advantage. Uh, producers were tr trying over and over to drive her to drink from coaxing to coercion to refusing her time and her schedule to go to AA, to retaliating against her for refusing to drink. McSweeney, who's been uh, open about her mental health issues, even hosts a podcast in which she interviews top medical experts about addiction and other matters, claims in the court papers that their alleged exploitation landed her in a psychiatric hospital. Just days ago, fellow Real Housewife star Brandy Glanville claimed in a legal letter that an obviously inebriated Cohen sexually harassed her by telling her that he wanted to sleep with another Bravo star while thinking of Glanville and invited her to watch the act over FaceTime. Cohen says he did say that, but it was all in jest. Yeah, isn't he gay? I thought yeah, he was gay. It, he's not bi, is he? What is he? I mean, just, so he'll just say no. that, right? I, I think I'm gay. I think it's pretty clear. Right. No, I also I've had gay men sexually harass me and it is Oh yeah, that's It's yeah. so fucking annoying. Sorry. It's just why am I sorry? Fuck that. I remember this one guy just like years and years ago like one time I think he went to like kiss me or touch my boob or something I'm like dude like we're not even in that kind of space. Like we're in public there's no vibe like he's like yeah, I just thought it'd be funny. I'm like to what? It, yeah, it, it's like, I'm like gay. Straight... It's not going to mean what you think. And I'm like, it's still my tit. Right. It's still and, my tit. Yeah. It's still my hair. Don't touch me. What the fuck? It's similar to straight guys doing that to gay guys, especially mm. like what in, in high school and shit like that, you know? Mm. Yeah. Because people want attention. Yeah. See, this is the thing that's very difficult about some kind of lawsuit like this, where it's like they exploited me. But the whole job is to exploit the way that you live, right? Like yeah. it, but you know, when they push into sexual harassment and sending, you know, dick pics and all that, that's that's different. It's interesting to want to be a reality star, to sign up to be a reality star and then talk about exploiting. Mm -hmm. But there is some line crossing here. I think that's separate. A few weeks earlier, Caroline Manzo, another Real Housewife star, also sued Bravo, claiming that the network and its producers regularly ply the Real Housewives cast with alcohol, cause them to become severely intoxicated, and then direct, encourage, and or allow them to sexually harass other cast members because that's good for ratings. McSweeney, 
who's being represented by uh by a real company that just won four million dollar defamation suit. Uh, you will for, not uh, get B. me to sexually harass someone because I've been quote plowed with alcohol. You will not ever <laughs> get me to do that. That is not. You can't make me do that. <laughs> <laughs> The network, they're saying, breached her rights under employment, under an employment law by failing to allow her to seek proper care for her alcohol addiction. Even though executives were aware of her problems, she's uh, seeking unspecified damages. McSweeney claims her first season on the Bravo show, was se which was season 12, she told the producers that she's been sober for 30 days and that she was working to maintain her sobriety. But instead of helping her stay on the wagon or providing, quote, reasonable accommodation, her addiction disability, as the law says, she cl she claims producers not only supplied Mrs. McSweeney with unlimited free of charge alcoholic beverages uh, throughout the employment on uh, season 12, but also encouraged her to consume these alcoholic be beverages. This environment uh, caused McSweeney to relapse into alcohol addiction shortly after joining blah, blah, blah. So it, it's this is a real um, a, a real company that like uh that's taking this case so they must know this has to be against the law i assume well it sounds like there's a lot of fucked up shit so i'm not going to speak about it like there's no fucked up shit what's confusing is that this is a a uh a reality show so why not follow her to aa you can't go in but why not follow her as she's trying not to drink i don't understand well that's not the show the but show I is that we get you drunk and you throw shit against the wall mm -hmm. yeah, yeah i mean i think the, the whole point is that they're being exploitative like i like i heard this was big many many years ago um i went to this like this at the time like famous reality star she had like this seminar thing and it came with free headshots so i went and she was talking about how it i mean and in fairness back in the day i don't think that it was as known then as it is now about how exploitative they are and like yeah. how you mm -hmm. know producers will get you to do things or will be very like do things to kind of pressure you into situations and you kind of don't fully understand what's going on right because, because as i understand it, as, like, it they do have a script and if you don't go into one of the lines of the script, they will coerce you that way. That's how I understand it, right? Yeah. And like, so, and I remember she just talked about in general how like stressful it is. And she talked about how like, obviously from the outside, people always see it as, oh yeah, but whatever, you can always just say no, it's super easy to. But she's like, it just, there's a certain atmosphere and a certain environment that it creates. And they also do totally. things to like kind of pit cast members against each other so like it makes you always feel like you're solo and like you don't really have any sense of like backup or like any sense of support so you kind of are like i guess i'm just gonna like drink this thing because they told me to and i'll instigate this fight because that's what the producers okay. want I then you yeah. get them drunk and i guess it's not hard to give them coke after that at what point do right. you become responsible yeah yeah, this yeah. should be very interesting because it, they mentioned this is against the law so that means that they can cite law and that's that's right. all it is right like if it is against the law it is and if it's not they're about to set a precedent and then and, the contract and, will just get longer when you sign it right you're in you're in double digits of seasons you got to think eventually it's going to catch up to you mm -hmm. you know you also at if you're at 12 seasons isn't that 12 years or is it six years i don't understand well that, that's her for i'm saying the producers no yeah. i know i heard 12 seasons if that's 12 years there's I over was... 12 seasons her first season was season 12 the, oh the main suit. oh i see okay because i'm I just think thinking if someone issue oh sorry mm -hmm. if someone's in for a while the they're a different that... person oh. And the other issue is sorry, everybody, everybody at the same time in three, two. <laughs> What's that? Calvin? I know that also a lot of the problem is money, too, because when you think about it, like a lot of these reality stars really don't make that much. And like, granted, yes, the real housewives. Yes, a lot of them are somewhat independently wealthy, but, but they're housewives. You know, they're not making money. Right. That's the whole point. Exactly. Okay. And so, like, I think that a lot of what's coming out is that it's like, hey, like, you're basically exploiting me and like pl plowing me, excuse me, with drugs mm -hmm. and alcohol. <laughs> and all I'm getting is like, because sometimes I, I heard, uh, or at least on certain reality shows, you only get as much as like $500 an episode, which is like, that's fucking nothing to like basically have your privacy invaded 24 hours a day. That's like intense. And you should, but be if you, more. if you throw the wine bottle against the wall, they'll pay for your whole dinner and another <laughs> glass of wine. <laughs> Those are nice also, restaurants they go to. 
this doesn't seem to be a thing that they initially do for the money for the thing. It seems to be for the clout and for the dinners and for the people that you get to meet because you are now also famous. So you get a book and you get a, a deal to do this other contract and blah, blah, blah. And again, I am not saying that nothing bad happened, that you signed up for this, so you have to deal with it. I just don't fully understand it. And I think like uh, from this lawsuit, obviously if like everyone's suing, there's something, you know, right. Uh, but I, I think it, it will be interesting. New laws will come out of it or um, people will be a little more careful. But like I said, I really think at the end of the day, the next reality show's contract will just be thicker because they're going to protect themselves from the rest of this shit. Mm -hmm. Are you an alcoholic? Did you ever feel like you're an alcoholic? If you do, you have to opt out. This is the way you opt out. Like all of that mm -hmm. will just be in that next, like, and we own you, not just the universe, like all of, you know, they just keep adding. I bet it used to be one page, in or out, check, in, right. done. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. Right. Uh, big news that does affect us, the Supreme Court ruled nine to zero that former President Donald Trump should appear on the ballot in Colorado after all. A majority of five to four said that no state could dump a federal candidate off any ballot. So everybody said we believe that he should be on the ballot, even though of the, the insurrection uh, by law, five out of four said he, he can be. What the not? Just the insurrection, because you could just say he said, go over there. We don't know what over there is. He's being indicted. He's he's on trial. He's in the middle of court. He uh, uh, what? We're, we're, what, we're what, so, what, 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 what can so... I do to not run for president? I yeah. am not qualified. This motherfucker is. <laughs> yeah, we're this reality so show. idiot. <laughs> he's, the, he's the reality show we were just talking about mm -hmm. how they plow you and they whatever mm -hmm. he is the plow what yeah. the fuck do you, do you yeah. think do people not do you think people don't know about all these indictments because there's so many and they go well there can't be this many and so uh, almost the more there is the better for him I think that I think yes in a way because in a sense they're just trying to get our men you know, like right. they just can't stand how good he is there. There's all of this conspiracy and trying to take him down. But look at him, how strong he is, how masculine he is. Look at how orange Ugh. he is. He's our man. <laughs> <laughs> this fucking orange. Fuck. How's it? How's it? A, Come on. <laughs> how's it a competition? Him and Biden. Obviously, we know that's what it's going to be. Oh, the uh, corpse event. Oh, my God. Should should remember when JFK said we're going to go to the moon? Not because it's easy, because it's hard and everybody came in their pants. How about Biden says we're going to Jupiter? Like, just, <laughs> come on, bring us something to get excited about again. Totally, totally. You oh, we landed on Jupiter, the moon though. again. Who gives a fuck the moon again? And by the way, this <laughs> we're over the moon. I know I said this fairly recently, but I also said, I bet you the moon looks like the fucking Staten Island dump. People are just leaving shit all over the place. And I think it was Mike Kaplan making fun of me like they don't clean it up. Why would they clean it up? They just put a rover on there. They knew it wouldn't last a week with its battery. They're not going to fly a plane to pick it up. There's so much shit on the moon. I guarantee it. And then I just saw this. Humans have left 400,000 pounds of garbage on the moon, including wow. 70 spacecrafts. Wow. Of course, flags, boots, magazines. By the way, that's how boring space is. They bring magazines on the moon. I told you space is stupid. <laughs> but the, look around. Take it in. I don't know. Can we bring some books or something? Okay. Can we scroll something on the screen that says the opinions are just of Keith Malley and we but these all are understand facts. that we're shaking our magazines. I, I wouldn't even bring an album to the moon. <laughs> you would think, but I know better because I took NASA classes. Now I know it's a little stupid up there. Cameras, oh backpacks, <laughs> tools, and even 96 bags of bodily waste. OK, wrap up. There. Well, yeah, yeah br bring those bags home. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I can't smell them, so whatever. I'm just saying, don't act like it's fucking pristine. We're ru if we're going there, then we're ruining it. It's we're turning into the earth already. And we didn't even build a fucking house up there. How is it not floating away? Am I dumb? 
No, the that, most that title. Is a good we must we must have them you know. nailed down. <laughs> <laughs> Nail uh, these called... ninety six bags of waves. <laughs> Oh boy! Uh, by the way, They're if like... you're curious, uh, the source is <laughs> "Oceans Are the Best Monthly." But okay, still, I knew something was up. Poop, <laughs> there <know>. it is. <laughs> Shout out to yes, Lisa. of course it's a it's no pun a shitty place. Yes, we gotta start going. Biting us to go. We're going to Saturn or something. Ugh! Why not say <laughs> anything? You're like okay. Who do you know in your life that's like 82, 83, Right? Anyone? Sure. My mom. <laughs> okay. <laughs> When your mom, like if she zooms with you or FaceTimes with you, you're like, no, mom, you figured it out. You press the two right buttons. Your head explodes. Here we are going like, I'm voting for you. The fuck? We are so happy when grandma knows how to like join a, a, a conference call or like, oh, your grandma emails. Oh, your grandma still like. What are we doing? I don't mean to age shame, but like it, you look like it. So totally, I don't know. Totally. I know. I know there are. 80, OK, Jane Fonda, um, 80 something. I vote for her for president. Yeah. Yeah, she's sure, still like sure. she had, she's fun. Lily Tomlin. Lily Tomlin. Absolutely. <laughs> Let's just uh, give it to those two. Yeah. Yeah. They work Run as a together. Team. Yeah. The Grace and Frankie team. Let's go. <laughs> That's an 80 year old that sit house shit and to Dolly, sing. You got to get Dolly in there, oh, too. Yeah, of yes. course. Oh, that yes. would be amazing. Yes. I would trust Dolly. Dolly Parton. Come on. To, to call you Dolly as my president. I'd find it an honor. Totally. Is Betty White still around? <laughs> I don't no, think so. she died. No, she died. Because oh, I would I'd vote for her even if she was that dumb character on Golden Girls. <laughs> right. <laughs> At least she means well. Jesus Christ. Right, right. <laughs> she was sweet, you know. Oh, God. Uh, Kevin Allison, people want to know about the fucking state tour dates. Where do they go? Just tell them. Don't tease. Go to the dash state dot com. We've had so much fun during doing these tour dates that now we're talking about doing another project together. Hello. Yay. Maybe doing Yay. something. We're, we're starting to pitch again to TV and film places. So we That's shall great. see. All right. So you got to you got to show up so that the, the people that powers that be no people care. That's the secret, mm -hmm. of course. May uh, I Calvin, say about yes. Calvin Cato? You may. Yes. Baby hair popping, lip gloss shining. I think you're in the mood for whining and dining. I don't know. When you came on the Zoom, that's that's the song that was in my head. I thought I'd sing it at you. You are fabulous. Oh, that's so funny. <laughs> Where Thank you. In Paris, I did put you? on the shiniest chapstick. It I works. So I'm like, look at so. you. That If I looked that good in lip gloss, I'd wear it to bed. It's so good. Yeah, it, it does your whole face something. Oh, I don't know. Stop. Yes. Oh, you wait till you wait till you see this book read. I'm taken. I am a taken man. Take it easy. Okay. <laughs> you did stop. drop the boyfriend thing. I I I I did hear that. I it. I'm there. I'm good. <laughs> Respect. You got, are you guys doing it nice? Uh, right, what? Are you guys doing it nice? Um, what's it? I'm sorry, buddy. All right, sorry. Well, what are what are you plowing? Yeah, are you guys oh, plowing you over there? There you go. Then what could it be? What could it be? I was going to say, Calvin, remember you're talking to a hetero man, and then Kevin came in and saved the day. When I was a kid and I didn't understand something they said on TV, I'm like, that must be about sex. <laughs> yeah. What else could it be? It's only, right. know, my goodness, my goodness. That's funny. <laughs> um, and uh, how should they, uh, how can they find what you're up to, Calvin? Uh, you can just go to calvincato.com, C-A-L-V-I-N-C-A-T-O, and uh, all my show dates are listed there. Calvin's going to be in, uh, speaking of Long Island, he's going to do stand-up, then an improv group's going to act out the stand-up that he just did. Sounds very exciting. If I mean. you're on Long Island, this is Christmas. Mm -hmm. I know your options in Port Jeff. Wake up. This is the <laughs> show you're going to. Port Come Jefferson. on. Port Jeff. Get a babysitter. Let's go. <laughs> <laughs> and of course, uh, Calvin is in the new book, The Dad Emails. I'm very excited about it. Take a look. KeithandTheGirl.com slash dad book. Uh, that leads uh, to Amazon, which also for just $5.99, because I want everybody to have it. You can get the great American novel. It's right there. 
Of course, there's me on the cover with uh, the holes I dug in the background that my uh, my dad, when he just wanted to be left alone when my mom was at work, he would uh, make up that the kids got in trouble for something. We had to dig uh, dig holes outside. Sure. But you know what's interesting? As sick as a punishment that is, I guarantee he didn't make it up. I guarantee he got it from some kind of movie. Right. This mm. fake motherfucker. I didn't think of that, but you're there's right. There's nothing about him that's original. Wow. He's evil, but there's nothing about him that's original. When we were kids, and he, he would say to us all the time, your feeble mind can't even begin to comprehend something. You know, he'd go, you're oh. stupid. I'm like, I'm stupid. Oh, you're that of a stupid. Um, then not too long ago, I think it was uh, listener Pam. I Somebody sent me a clip from a horror movie where the bad guy says, your feeble mind can't even begin to comprehend. I'm like, that's where you what? got it. Oh, he saw the movie wow. Gaslight back in the day before it was a word we use now. And he thought the bad guy was clever. He was impressed that the guy was <laughs> gaslighting his wife. <laughs> yeah, Holy shit. I mean, I don't even want to, because when you say you were made to dig holes, that's like a part of it. You were made to dig holes that were three by three without yeah. a measuring tape. Then he would come out with a measuring tape. And of course, you got it wrong. Of although course. I think at this point, oh my you God. know what feet are and you don't. <laughs> I think that's a rebellion, Keith. You <laughs> not knowing where you're going or what you're doing seems like you're just rebelling until this man dies. <laughs> so I don't know. I'm glad he got your book before he passed because I know that was your dream come true. Of and I think we're ready. Thank you, Father Malley. All right, there we have it. Uh, KeithMillGirl.com slash dad book. You'll see uh, everything right there. The new stand-up album, like I said, is Nice Try Tricksters. Beautiful art by Mallory Jane. You'll like it for the art alone, but I'm proud of the jokes inside as well. And that's that. Thank you so much. Uh, Kevin, thanks for your time. Calvin, always a blast seeing you. We appreciate it. Click on Thank all the buttons. Thank you, guys. Thank you. That's now, I, I just want to say that Ryan V is trying to piss me off by saying vote libertarian in the middle of this uh, real smart oh. situation that we have. Ryan hearts. You know what I mean? And now he's clapping. Good job. All right. <laughs> 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 Thank you all for listening. I really do hope you press all the buttons in front of you, whether they're thumbs down or thumbs up, whatever makes you feel good. Do it with your thumbs. 